Here's our life-saving moment of the day. Brian Hamilton is the Vancouver Canucks assistant equipment manager, and he owes his life to the kindness of a stranger. Nadia Popovich is a 22-year-old medical student that pointed out a mole on the back of Hamilton's neck when the Canucks were playing the Kraken, and that mole turned out to be cancerous. And lucky for us, we get to talk to that hero herself today. Yes, we do. Nadia joins us now. And, and Nadia, thank you for joining us. Uh, and, and just an incredible story. Take us back to October 23rd. You arrive there to support your crack, and it's the first home game of the season. The atmosphere is electric. You find yourself seated behind the opposition Canucks bench. And then take it from there. Take us through uh, what propelled you to do this heroic act and, and save a life. Yes, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, yeah, so I, I was seated right behind the plexiglass and that allowed me to have a really good view of the players and the staff. Uh, and a stranger at the time uh, was actually stationed um, across from me on the other side of the bench for the whole game. But occasionally he would walk in front of me to hand someone something or, or throw something. And uh, during one of those moments, uh, he lifted his arm up and the back of his jacket pulled down just a little bit and I noticed a mole and being super curious I leaned up really close to the glass and I kind of studied it and I saw that it was raised it had irregular borders and uh, it, it was discolored and I knew those were hallmarks of, of skin cancer and from that moment, I thought, you know, if that was on me, I would want to go see a doctor immediately. And so I knew that I had to find a way to contact him and hopefully just encourage that to happen. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so this all happened in October, right? We fast forward, life kind of goes on as usual. And four days ago on January 1st, you're up super late and not because like many people, she's out partying on New Year's Eve. You actually work on a suicide prevention line and of your mom- Of course she does. Right, of course she does. Cause she just does good all the way around <laughs> yeah. at all times. And your mom gives you a phone call uh, in the middle of the night essentially. And she tells you what? Yeah, so uh, she calls me and she just says, Nadia, you have no idea what's going on right now. And she said, go check the Kraken's Twitter. So I, I pull it up and Red's uh, beautiful statement is pinned and I get to read it a couple of times. And I just cannot believe that they are looking for me. Twitter is looking for me. And, uh, you know, to at the same time get news that what I thought his mole was, was actually malignant melanoma. And uh, I, I mean... It was just such a breathtaking moment. I screamed on the phone with my mom and, and probably cried with her for uh, a solid couple of minutes. And from then on, I mean, my my life has truly been changed within a couple of days. And I, I can't thank both the teams enough. Nadia, I want to I want to go back to that moment when you realized, hey, I would want to know this if I were Brian Hamilton, the equipment manager who had the cancerous mole on his neck. Uh, take me through when that moment hits you when you're like, I have to let him know the severity of this. Uh, what did you do? What was your tactic to connect with him? Yeah, absolutely. So you you can't obviously talk to each other through the glass. It's so loud. Um, this is the first game. So obviously the crowd is just absolutely wild on both sides. And uh, so I knew at that moment, the only way I was going to be able to have the possibility of talking to him would be through text. Uh, and so I decided, you know, Clearly, I'm dressed in all Kraken gear. He's on the Canucks, and I, I kind of look like a hater. Um, so I realized that, and um, I typed up on my phone, the mole on the back of your neck is possibly cancerous. Please go see a doctor. Uh, and I made mole cancer and doctor in bright red, bolded fonts, uh, just so, you know, if he only took a second to gl glance at it, he would immediately get the big picture. Uh, and so there was one moment at the end of the period, all the players left and Red was actually there in, in somewhat of a private moment. And I pressed up my uh, my phone to the glass and knocked really loud. And it, I didn't get his attention the first time. So I knocked louder and smiled and tried to look friendly and pointed. Uh, and luckily he, he took a second, he leaned in and read it. And then he just shrugged and, and left. And that was the big moment. <laughs> So I hear, Nadia, you were able to meet Brian actually in person not too long ago. What was that interaction like? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so obviously when this happened, Brian uh, Red was a stranger. Uh, and now I can truly say that that he's family. 
I, I got to have such a beautiful conversation with him, uh, and, and not only him, but his partner and his 13-year-old daughter about how this has impacted their family. And hearing what happened on the other side of the glass that day, you know, the fear, the, the confusion through the next couple of days, um, and ultimately the relief. And I, I just, I feel so thankful that I was able to meet this incredible father and human. I mean, truly the fact that he is willing to put the story out there just speaks so much to his generous character. And I, I can't, I can't thank him enough. He's just the most wonderful guy, really. Nadia, you, you can't thank him enough. You, you saved his life. Uh, what did Brian <laughs> say to you in that interaction? I imagine there was uh, just heaps and heaps of gratitude. Yeah, yeah. He. So you know, it's it's kind of a strange moment because we're strangers, but we're immediately jumping into a very intimate and an emotional conversation just right off the bat, and so. He told me, you know, the doctor said that this would have progressed to dangerous levels within six to 12 months. And I may not be here within five years if I did not realize that this was there. And I mean, it's just amazing. He did not know, first of all, that this was cancerous. But second of all, that there was even a mole on the back of his neck because who checks the back of their neck, right? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm so happy that I was able to, to point it out. And this was truly the, the best case scenario. It feels like like a movie from start to finish. Uh, and I mean, it's it's just incredible. It's still, it, I can't believe that it's my life. Well, you've got a long and bright future, obviously, yes. ahead of you. But really quick, before we let you go, I know that the Canucks and the Kraken kind of came together to make you feel, obviously, like this was so much appreciated yeah. because it was on both sides. What did they do for you? Yeah, so in front of the entire arena, they announced that they came together to grant me a $10,000 scholarship for medical school that I'll be starting this fall 2022. Uh, and I mean, truly, the money means the world to me. Um, I would not be able to afford medical school, period. Um, and I was actually looking into, uh, or I got accepted into the army scholarship to become an army physician so that that would help me in my financial assistance. But that even that doesn't cover everything. So the fact that they believe in me and they want to support my dreams, it, it, it it's so touching and it's so special. And I will, I will never forget this, this beautiful grant. You know, Nadia, we wake up in the morning and check our Twitter timelines, and sometimes it's filled with so much darkness. Uh, it's really, yeah. really cool to see you shine your bright light on humanity and do something so important and be the hero that you wake up and you are every day. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for the impact you've had on Brian's life, saving one, and we hope for more people like you out there on God's green earth. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you so much. Our next NHL on ESPN matchup has the Wild in Boston playing the back end of a two-game road trip against the Bruins. And our featured ESPN Plus matchup is another Pennsylvania battle between the rivals, the Pens and the Flyers. Our coverage of Thursday game starts at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, and they're available on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Shay, the internet wildly weird. And I give you our penalty call of the day. Finish him. Of course, penalty. <laughs> for fighting. Uh, in other news, more serious, Connor McDavid tests positive for COVID. The Edmund, Edmonton Oilers star forward found out he's positive. Uh, Coach Dave Tippett announced after practice on Tuesday. The Oilers have returned from the league's COVID-19 pause and holiday break with a little bit of a struggle having lost four straight. Staying on the ice now, let's go into three stars. Tell you who highlighted your night last night. And let's start with our third star, and it goes to Sergei Bobrowski. Bobrowski made a season-high 47 saves en route to a 6-2 win for the Florida Panthers. He gets his 15th win of the season as his Panthers move to a three-team tie for second place in the Eastern Conference. Two stars, second star of the night, Troy Terry. Terry scores a hat trick to help his Ducks win over the Flyers. Terry's hat trick is the fourth in the NHL of the 2022 calendar year, and we're only five days in. 21 goals on the season for Terry. His Ducks defeat the Flyers 
4-1 for their 18th W of the season. Terry! First, oh, my, Terry! I knew you were going to have something there. First star of the night is Kale McCarr. Check out this overtime winner from McCarr against the Blackhawks. McCarr slams on the brakes and puts Kirby Doc in a blender before scoring. Mark andre Fleury there but couldn't stop it and that's what's going to win the game 14th of the season for McCarr and avalanche win 4-3 in OT.